All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and I'm excited to welcome Amanda Taylor and Priya Doshi, who are going to talk about AU's plan for inclusive excellence. Hi, everyone. Welcome to AU. We are we are the lucky uh, late afternoon session, which means I'm sure your your attention is peak right now relative to where it's been all day. Um, so let us just quickly introduce ourselves, and then we are going to hopefully get you all re uh, you know engaged and and connected. So my name is Amanda Taylor. She and hers pronouns. Um, I am lucky enough to serve as the assistant vice president for diversity, equity, and inclusion here at AU. Um, with an incredible team of folks from across the university um, who are all collaborators and partners in this work, you all being being a part of that process as well. Um, and I also am a faculty member in the School of International Service, where I was full-time faculty for 10 years, um, and so have had this wonderful bridge into kind of a broader view of the university. My colleague, Priya. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Priya Doshi. I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty and Inclusive Excellence, so I'm in the Office of the Provost. Um, a lot of my job is, well, my, almost all of my job is faculty affairs, but with a very strong lens on inclusive excellence. Um, I'm also a member of the faculty um, in the School of Communication. This is my 10th year at AU and my first year in administration. Um, so welcome to all of you. We're really excited to be here with you today. Yeah, absolutely. So given our late afternoon slot, wondering if we can ask each of you to kind of do a minute of, of just connecting with each other and yourselves. So wondering if you can take a minute just to think in your head quietly or write down if you're a jotter or a texter, if that works better um, for yourself. Try to center on an environment in your academic experience whether that was you as a student, you as a faculty member in a previous you know, institution, um, whatever it comes up for you, you as you in an academic environment, when you felt the strongest sense of belonging. So take 30 seconds just to center on that. We put it in the chat for the online audience. Hopefully you all can see that. Okay. So hopefully you've kind of centered on that for a minute. And now maybe take just 10 seconds to say, to think to yourself, what were the characteristics of that environment? Right? What, what made it feel like that for you? Now, hopeful that you'll take a minute and that our online audience will indulge us for just a minute while we ask you to turn to a colleague at your table, or if there's three of you, partner up in three, and quickly share your name, school you're, you're teaching in, and some of the characteristics of that environment. If you want to share the details, great, but no pressure on that front. What were the characteristics of that environment for you? And share those just two, three minutes. So, you like to bring it along. Right. And it means put you on the spot. We need to go first. Yeah. I felt so sense of belonging. I was a graduate student. I have a short term. Which I am like some fair, and I'm excited to give me a free break. 
Oh no, I think everything is going to be just about one more minute. I like when I do not not project wise, but I love. Yeah, so I I think this country, I just put like lots of aliens. It's just very far, but it still is far. It was a small as an undergraduate where we would start the discussion. There was a friend of mine who, who I liked, but uh, we were mostly discussing books. We do have opposite. Okay, let's start wrapping up. There's never enough time. One minute. Okay, we've got begging for one minute. One minute. An online audience, if you want to type in the chat characteristics of that environment, we welcome you. Uh, we always had opposite perspectives. That was okay. I realized that the faculty member was on one side, not like anything to agree with him, but the students were And then later, what I was most interested in. About that later, the that he signed on the So both those situations are Okay. So let's wrap up our small groups. <laughs> and any brave volunteers, and we welcome our online audience to also pop things in the chat. We're happy to read them out loud. But what were the characteristics of, of those environments for you, those learning environments that made them made you feel like you belonged in those spaces or places? Any brave volunteers to share out? You know, we all know this wait time faculty, right? Yes, thank you. Oh, Anna, you want me to get this one? Sure. And would you say your name? Uh, yeah, um, I'm Kyle Hackett in the uh, CAS um, in art. Um, the qualities, I'll just stick with that. Um, I would say um, representation and faculty and leadership um, that served as mentors. Um, and then their willingness to meet me where I was at and go out of their way to create opportunities um, for me and also uplift um, and build confidence uh, in me. So those are the qualities I shared. So we were actually talking about places where we didn't belong. <laughs> but before that, <laughs> um, librarians are everywhere. <laughs> Before that, I was thinking about some different spaces, and I think that it echoes what was said before, that it's a place where you can have communication and connection and kind of have somebody who's giving you honest feedback, but in a kind way, in a way that shows that we're in it together. And I think that that's, to me, the heart of the different communities that were inclusive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe one more. One more from our face to face audience. Yeah, please. Yeah, come on over. Hello. Oh, oh you got voluntold, huh? Is that okay? 
Okay. <laughs> I know. I was like, hi, my name is um, my name is Tils Hi. I was like, I know. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. I, I'm, I'm full time now. Yeah. So um, I was just telling my table. I'm a survivor of brain injury and head trauma, and I suffered grand mal seizures for ten years, oh. and um, and I from age eleven to twenty one, and I also suffered from petite mal seizures like several a day. Um, I went to my undergraduate school at California State University, Los Angeles. I'm a Californian. And when, when you have a seizure, it can be very embarrassing because you don't know what's going on. You're talking one minute and then you get the aura, you get to the tonic clinic phase and you're just out. And I was telling them that, you know, I knew I belonged to Cal State LA because I remember after a couple of seizures, I'd be with friends one minute and the next minute not. But I remember when I came to, the police were there, campus security that was there and my friends were there saying, it's okay you're all right. And then I eventually, you know, they saw my bracelet and they saw that I, you know, that I, I suffered seizures. But what was really amazing was that um, through the four years that I was at, um, three years that I was at Cal State Los Angeles, they knew about my condition, but they didn't make fun. They didn't emphasize it. They didn't make me different. But I also knew that if it happened, no matter what classroom I was in, even if I was in the cafeteria or anything else, I would be taken up, I would be taken care of, and I was okay, especially as a minority female. You know, I, it made me feel a sense of belonging. So that's why they told me to share it. Yeah, <laughs> but it but it was a good feeling. And um uh 10 years and then they went away and I haven't had one since. So yeah. So and no surgery, um, medication, but no surgery. So that was it. Thanks for sharing that, Tobias. Appreciate it. Yeah, definite themes in here, right? Being seen feeling supported, lifting up, represented. We're hearing themes in the chat also of representation, affirmation, right, that are coming up, um, seeing us for our full selves, right, challenging us um, in those contexts. And so we like to do this just to ground the work, right, the why we can talk about inclusive excellence. And we have a plan for inclusive excellence here at American University, which we'll sort of talk a little bit about. But I like to ground the conversation in the why, right? This is how we want it to show up. Right, the way it's shown up in these same themes, that's the end result of what all this work that's happening across the campus is supposed to sort of, that's that's how we want it to show up for our students. That's how we want it to show up for all of you. That's how we want it to show up for our staff, for our alumni and beyond, right? So that's where we're headed. Um, and our plan for inclusive excellence, just so you have a little bit of history as you come into AU's context, right? We started, there's been work, we're calling it inclusive excellence, right? We, we have tons, tons of buzzwords in this work, as we all know, right? Um, but but this, this idea that we cannot be excellent in any way, shape, or form as an institution if we are not committed to inclusivity at every facet of what we do, right? Period. Um, so that sort of concept has been going on since the start of AU, right? I mean, this that we have had, AU has a, has a wonderful history of commitments to, to inclusion, equity, justice in all the ways. And AU also has a history as many higher ed institutions do of doing the exact opposite of that, right? Um, so these sort of countervailing forces, right? Have always been at work at AU as they have been in, in, in many higher education institutions, right? But for AU, the strategic work around inclusive excellence began in 2017 and 2018. So our current president, President Burwell, that's when she started. And um, we were just on the heels of what was really, I would call our AU racial reckoning on campus, right? Our most recent one, at least. I think in our history, we've had many, but this is our most recent one in 2017. It made, made the Washington Post and, and the Chronicle so y'all can read about it. But essentially, we had our first Black female student body president on campus. And she was a, is an incredible woman. Um, but she was subject to an extraordinarily horrific um, set of, of targeting, you know, based on her identities. And it was really public and horrible. Um, and really it, it raised, it lifted up also, you know, what had been histories, right, of, of um, marginalization, right, that, that, that not only an anti-Blackness, but also lots of forms of like oppression and underrepresentation and lack of belonging that many community members had felt over the years, right? So, so this situation became kind of a touch point for the campus. And it got really clear that we needed to do something serious, intentional, and broad, right? To really start to say, how do we get at what makes us who we are as an institution, all of the facets of that work, and be really intentional and thoughtful about a process towards really digging up um, and digging out what are some of the underlying drivers, right, that show up for, for our students and our faculty members and our, and our staff colleagues in all kinds of different ways that don't create that sense of belonging, right, that y'all just described. So, 
we had a plan that President Burwell and, and my former big boss, I call her VP Fanta Av, who's who was at AU for 30 years and has now gone on to her dream, um, her dream quasi-retirement job, I'm calling it. Um, but but they together and together with a thousand sort of campus partners built out this five-year plan. And we are in the sort of sixth year, actually, we're starting our sixth year of this five-year plan now. So what you'll see. You know, you don't need to know all of the details of the Inclusive Excellence Plan, but I do want you to kind of understand at a high level, what are the domains of work underneath this plan and how do you fit in, right? So the big domains of work, we have kind of five core areas. This, this, they're, they're meant to sort of represent and capture what are the, the things that make a university a university, right? The ways we do what we do and how do we make sure that we're really taking action, strategic action in all these domains, right? So there's five domains you can see up here on your slide, um, you know, learning curriculum and professional development. We think about that in formal and informal learning. We think about it, students, faculty, and staff and administrators, all kind of a part of this learning organization. Um, in that domain, we think about campus climate, culture, and community, right? How we feel, how we show up for each other, right? How that's reflected in, the, in, in kind of our sensibilities and relationships with each other. We think about our policies and practices as kind of the, kind of the structure and the backbone of the work, the architecture. Um, that's everything from our data systems to our big policies, um, small P practices, right? And all the ways that those kind of create an infrastructure here at the, in, at the university. Then we think about access and equity. Again, faculty, staff, and students, right? Who's, who's getting invited? In and who's not, and what has been, we, I think about equity as kind of the outcome, right? How do we make sure we have equality of outcomes, um, <clears throat> right, at the end of whatever that journey is, whether it's a student journey, faculty journey, staff journey, et cetera. Um, and then finally, research, scholarship, and creative work. How do we also make sure that not just the topics of our research, scholarship, and creative work, that can be a piece of this, right, but that the process of sort of doing research, knowledge work, creative work is also attentive to our values of, of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That can look like lots of things. That can look like, um, again, it doesn't have to be that everyone does research on one certain topic. We know that doesn't create a healthy learning environment. You can study rats and do diversity and inclusion, right, in your research. Who is in your lab? Who are you citing, right? All these kinds of things. How are you disseminating the knowledge? How are you making sure communities that need it are getting access to, to the research and creative work that you that you design, right? So we're really thinking about in a broad level, how do we do this? So I'd, I'd encourage you to sort of check that out if you, in your spare time, once you get your feet on the ground, but know that that's kind of the fundamental architecture that we're welcoming you into. So what does this mean for faculty and what resources do we have for you? I mean, at the end of the day, y'all are key partners, as you know, for this work. Just the way that you described, whether you're faculty or students in this experience, right? You are levers for being a part of this work to create a space for belonging, representation, access, visibility, and support and challenge, right? For all of our students, for your colleagues, for our staff members who you interact with, right? For the alumni who can support you. And um, you are also people here at this university yourselves, right? And so we also wanna make sure that you have access to those opportunities for support being seen, right? As humans, as individuals, as scholars, as, as teachers too. So we're gonna talk about just some of the resources you have available to you and some of the ways that you can kind of be in touch with. We also just wanna make sure you know, at the end of the day, when you forget all of this, you know folks you could reach out to if you have questions or if you wanna get more involved in any kind of way. Okay, so a couple of key resources I've got on the, the right-hand side of the slide here. You've already been introduced to our Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning. There are a lot of resources, especially around sort of how do you teach in a way that creates um, an inclusive learning environment. They've got lots of resources you'll learn more about later this week. Um, they also have inclusive pedagogy fellows, faculty members from across campus who have raised their hand to sort of specifically be partners um, to you one-on-one. -on -one. Also in doing this work, if you have, you know, hey, look at my syllabus, or I'm trying to figure out this dilemma I'm grappling with in my classroom, there, there are faculty members, right, who are getting a stipend who raised their hand to be supports to our colleagues across campus. Um, we've got faculty staff affinity groups, um, across campus and you'll meet them, yes, today. Thank you, Anna. Um, there's lots of them, great ways to get involved and get engaged, just build community with various sort of identity groups, different kinds of lenses and ways to sort of be an affinity and community. We welcome you to join those. It's also great ways to kind of build relationships among faculty, but also across faculty and staff, which we know is one of those traditional divides in the academy that can drive um, a lower sense of belonging for lots of folks, but we can really help to increase um, uh, visibility for everybody. 
Um, another thing to know, we have a name and gender identity policy here at AU. It's relatively new. Um, it allows all of our students and you as well to actually put in a chosen name and pronouns if you want into our university systems and they'll show up on campus. So when you are looking at your students um, uh, in the roster on Canvas, know that all of your students have had a chance to basically put in a chosen name and, and pronouns in there. And this can be really, really affirming for you to use a chosen name for a student, right? It makes us feel seen. It makes us feel heard. Also, related to that, we have what we call name coach. I don't know if any of you know about that, but the first day of class, you ever like me and you look at your your you're trying to call roll and you're like, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name. And I know if I get it wrong, day one, I've already, <laughs> you know, I might've shut somebody down. So name coach is something that we now have embedded in Canvas. And you can actually um, yourself record you saying your name, right? And you can also prompt your students to record themselves saying their name. Many of them have done this. We're just rolling this out that this is only our second year. So all the students might not have done it yet, but you can send an email through Canvas to invite your students to record their name on name coach. And it will actually go to all the classes. So you're helping each other. Once they do it once, it's going to all their faculty. Okay, so another way to really just first day of class, you're using a chosen name and you're pronouncing their names correctly. That goes so far in terms of setting that environment. Um, Priya will talk about this more, but also know you have resources in your schools and units um, who are there for you in terms of you know, this work around diversity, equity, inclusion, anti-racism, and inclusivity. And Priya, you'll talk more about the advanced project too. So I won't, I won't take too much time there, but thank you. Um, and also happy to talk with you at any point, should it be helpful. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so while we're still here and before I move on to the next slide, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the school-based inclusion leads. So I'm just gonna go to the next slide. Whoops, that wasn't what I wanted to do, sorry. There we are. Okay, so you'll see in that middle column that each of the schools has an associated inclusion lead, um, and they are a great resource for you at the school level um, for anything related to inclusive excellence. They're tied in with us um, in terms of the President's Council on Diversity and Inclusion, and we're really trying to collaborate, share resources, um, and also share best practices across the schools. So um, those are your those are your leads there. Um, in addition, we provided you um, with some links here, and um, I think we can make the presentation available, right? So those are hyperlinks um, to the Inclusive Excellence Plan in case you wanted to read it for yourselves, um, to CTRL, which has a tremendous number of faculty resources, as Amanda mentioned, and, you know, this isn't a one-time thing. They're doing this throughout the year, so I definitely encourage you to watch CTRL space, um, and they also have some, you know, regular resources that you can use at any time. Um, we've talked about faculty and staff affinity groups, but that's a hyperlink to the page for them. And then I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the advance grant. So the advance grant is something that we were fortunate enough to win from the National Science Foundation. And it's a grant that's specifically aimed at looking at increasing professional opportunities for women and underrepresented groups in STEM. But the National Science Foundation's definition of STEM is not what people often think about as being limited to the sciences or math. It actually includes all the social sciences, which means that most of the faculty at AU are um, considered STEM faculty. Um, so we have a couple of different initiatives running under that grant right now, which would be of interest to you. One is that we're doing uh, mini grants for anybody that's looking to develop their career through, say, they're looking for a little, little extra research funding. They may be also looking for um, the ability to attend a conference or do a presentation, and they need a little bit of funding there. These are meant to be um, those kinds of things to provide you with a little bit of extra money in that space. Um, so there's a very simple grant application. Again, if you go to that, that's located on the Dean of Faculty's website. You can see it's a pretty simple thing. We're accepting applications until September 22nd. So you don't have to come up with something new. If you're already engaged in a project and you're looking for support, you can you know, think about what specific aspect you need support with and, um, and look at that. In addition, the advanced grant is also looking to roll out a mentoring program. So this is for faculty looking to go up for promotion. So it will be a few years away for anybody who's brand new. But um, the idea is to help link mentoring mentors who have already been through that process with mentees um, and meet in small cohorts to provide advice. 
Um, and then a third thing that everybody is welcome to attend is we're planning a fall symposium, which will really profile the topic of um, faculty career opportunities in STEM, again, specifically targeted at um, women and underrepresented groups. So we hope to see you at that. I think the date is still a little um, movable, but I think it's October 12th. Um, so, um, so that's just a little bit about us and the resources we provide. I would also say with my faculty affairs hat on coming out of the provost's office that um, as you're looking to sort of build up your portfolios in terms of, you know, teaching, um, your currency in the field and your service work, you know, think about what really is a, a passion point for you in the space of inclusive excellence and think about how you might get involved. Um, it's a story that we definitely want um, to unfold and explore for everybody, and it means different paths for different people. Um, but, you know, think about what opportunities exist. I'm actually on the, the next presentation as well, so you're going to have me for a whole hour, yay, um, on service. So I'll get more into that when we talk about um, uh, faculty service in the next session. Um, but I did want to just sort of emphasize that it is something that's a critical part of our uh, reappointment and promotion guidelines is looking at inclusive excellence. So with that, I want to turn it over to you all for questions, comments, thoughts. Um, what can we answer for you? And Anna's got the mic, so just raise your hand and she can come around. And those of you in the chat, you can also ask questions. How, except, let me start with a, a lighter question then. Um, how, if you had to say in one word how you're feeling about the start of the semester, <laughs> what would you say? Stop. Okay. What was that? Stop. Stuck? No, I said stop. Stop. Oh, stop. Don't let it come. <laughs> I like that. Anybody else? Anybody super excited? That's cool. All right. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> Okay. Hey, anybody super nervous? Yeah. I had to say, neither the super nervousness nor the super excitement ever goes away. You know, you can teach and teach and teach, and the first day of class, you always walk in there being like, <gasps> you know, um, until you build that report. So yeah, that's uh, that's not that's not something that fades. Supported, love that. So let me just say one thing um, as y'all, your questions will probably, if you're like me, they arise in the moment when you need it, right? You run into something. So know you can always follow up. Also know your students. We're talking from a sort of faculty back end. Know that your students have a lot of supports for them as well in terms of diversity and inclusion. We have a center for diversity and inclusion on campus. It's not an academic center. Um, that center is really there to, to advocate for students, to help them, you know, develop their identities, to work on intergroup dialogue, right, to be in community. We have a, you've learned about um, academic support for students who, um, we also, who also have maybe disabilities or learning differences. Um, and there's great ways, right, for students to find that as well. So if, if you have questions on that, at our diversity page at AU, um, which I can put in the chat if you can't find it, Lindsay, sorry, has a whole bunch of links as well. So if you're trying to say, oh, my student needs some support, I don't know where to send them, right? We've got supports for undocumented students. We have supports for students who might be food insecure, right? All listed there. And it's sort of one way to help point your students, oh, check this out, that might help you if you're trying to also support them and don't know where to go. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and on that point too, I wanted to say um, there will be a session tomorrow that CTRL is doing on inclusive uh, classroom practices, which I think will be really helpful um, as well, because there's a lot of things that I know first time teaching doesn't necessarily occur to us that I, you know, and it's helpful to have those tips. Um, I started off as uh, in this work well, first in community service, but then as inclusion officer for the school of communication. And a lot of what we did was share tip sheets with faculty at the start of the semester um, because diversity at AU is really very multi-dimensional, right? Which is what you would expect. Um, so, you know, we often think of like racial and ethnic diversity, but it's obviously the range of diversity, right? Gender and sexuality, socioeconomic status is a big one at AU because, you know, you have people that are quite privileged and people who or not um, often feel marginalized, you know, so that's something to consider um, perspective, you know, political perspective as well. Um, religion, you know, these are all aspects that we run into in the classroom. So um, just wanted to put that out there as well. 
Well, we're at time. So thank you so much, y'all. Good luck. Enjoy. Um, I hope you enjoy each other. Uh, we often hear, I will say this as a small tip, we often hear from new faculty. It was so cool to meet new faculty. And then you go off into your corners and you never see each other again. And you're like, wait, I met that cool person in my table. So let me offer you or online. Um, so if you, if you, if I can offer you one piece of advice for today, exchange emails with the person you were talking to who you thought was super cool so you can follow up in about three weeks when all of a sudden your head is exploding okay and then you feel like you've got somebody who you want to reconnect with okay so thank you all take care enjoy the rest of your day